Hey guys, what's up? This is Mel, and I'm here to talk about Orphan Black, episode 504, titled Let the Children and the Child Bearers Toll, which premiered Saturday, July 1st, 2017 on Space and BBC America, and I am recording on July 2nd. Um, so with that said, guys, huge spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. Um, otherwise, my other video reminders are up on screen, so take a moment to read over those. And Otherwise, let's start the 10-minute clock, and let's begin with what happened in this episode. So timeline-wise, I'm thinking it's the next day after the events of 5.03. Um, but storyline-wise, um, you pretty much have two different storylines going on. First one being finding a Neolotian defector, and the second being Kasima trying to figure out who the... Um, the creature in the woods is that Sarah wondered about. So the first storyline um, is finding a Neolution defector. And this is Mrs. S taking Sarah um, to go and track down um, and steal the identity of Dr. Elizabeth Perkins, a psychologist, so they, they it can get access to a patient under the name of Alex Ripley, who is um, locked away in an, uh, an institution. Alex Ripley is actually not their real name it's actually dr virginia cody um the leader of project caster and then she was locked away by susan duncan who had faked cody's death at the end of season three now uh, it turns out that um dr cody was recruited by pt westmoreland and susan um early on in her career and she apparently agreed to experiment on a child with a unique genome which ended up turning out to be um the the creature in the woods that attacked Sarah um, after so many experiments ended up turning things bad for him, like tumors started to grow and stuff like that um, due to all the testing. So we we find out that from Cody, who is the defector. Sarah just doesn't know where Mrs. S is getting the, um, the information from. I'm thinking it's Delphine, but Mrs. S is mum about that. Second storyline, though, is back on the island, and Kasima... Um, realizes that mud is being protected over the creature in the woods who um, she actually gets a glimpse of for the first time and she sees that he's actually a lot feral and then she would realize actually taking on maybe animalistic uh, behaviors from the looks of it um, but mud seems to be very protective bringing him things um, whatever he needs trying to keep people away from him claiming that there's a bear in the woods hope and if any of the um, patrol people ask her where he is. She claims she doesn't know anything. Um, but while finding out any of this, Kasim also finds the basement dwelling where the old science experiments used to be done on this uh, uh, former child turned creature. And some of the results were very gruesome from the looks of it. And Mud tries to get Kasima away from all that, though. But Kasima's not going to stop until she gets answers. So there's that. Now, the last scene of the episode shows P.T. Westmoreland and Susan toasting over the fact that they are now working under a new working arrangement together. Um, now, the reason why they kind of split paths from each other in the past was because Susan did, had a limit she had when it came to this child with a unique genome while... Uh, PT wanted to continue forward with the testing, which is why he turned to uh, Virginia on that path. Um, while Susan didn't want anything to do with her controversial methods, from what I understand. So now, though, um, they've come to a new agreement since um, Susan um, points out that PT is lost without her when it comes to the science, or this brand of science that he's looking into, um, with his claims of having uh, a new lead from the looks of it. Now, moving on to new characters or characters in general. So Scott, as you know, he's been researching what he can about P.T. Westmoreland, um, finding out the fact that he was born in 1843. He allegedly died in 1898, or that's where he disappeared off the grid. And um, and that's why everyone perceived him to be dead. Well, Hell Wizard, um, the manager of the comic book store, their little lab is stationed underneath. He seems to be hacking into some res records for Mrs. S, locating um, certain IDs. I think he found um, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Perkins for her. I think he found the whereabouts of a possible Alex Ripley or the connection Alex Ripley had. Um, so he's just finding all these um, statements that Mrs. S needs. Um, and also, um, we see the return of Dr. Virginia Cody, last seen um, at the end of Season 3. Um, and it looked like Again, she was locked away by Susan when Castor was destroyed. 
Um, she apparently goes beyond, um, goes above and beyond for the science, um, even though Susan has a limit to it. But uh, apparently for years, uh, Westmoreland has kept um, uh, Virginia and Susan apart, um, giving um, Susan um, Project Lita and, Cas and Project Castor going to Virginia and then just keeping them separate. So there's that. We see the return of Adele, which is um, Felix's half-sister. And we actually find out in this episode that Mrs. S told her everything because she needs her specific skill sets to help them follow the money, as Adele was disbarred as a lawyer for being an embezzler. So Mrs. S brings her in so that she can follow the, the new Lucian money trail that is leading them to Switzerland. And that's kind of why, uh, why she's brought into the fold. Also, we learn a little bit about the nun that's taking care of Helena, and apparently it's the same nun that helped her out back in the UK. And apparently she was punished beforehand by having her, by having her tongue cut out. Um, but she's been very nice to Helena over the years. And in this time of Helena needing her, she's come back to help her in that sense, I think. Don't know if she specifically traveled to there, that convent to help Helena or if she was already at that convent and Helena knew to go there to get um, a refuge from her. So there's that. Tidbit wise though is the fact that we get Ira reuniting with Susan back on the island and this is where he learns about uh, Virginia Cody being alive. Um, we also learn that Kira who had that um, pocket knife at the end of the previous episode she cut herself purposely to test out her own healing abilities. Apparently she cut off a bit of her skin on her arm and she's testing how quick she heals. Um, so there's that which really sets off some alarm bells with um, the rest of the family. Um, so there's that. I already mentioned about, um, uh, Mrs. S recruiting Adele. Um, we do learn a little fun fact about Felix not liking fondue. So there's that. And also we see Helena giving Sarah some advice about Kira and the connection she feels. Not only between Helena and Sarah, but with Kira and the other clones. So there's that. Moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode. I think it would have to be the fact that the defector was a Virginia Cody. I wasn't expecting it to be someone we already knew. Like... I don't know. I didn't expect it to be her. For some reason, uh, Marion Boyles um, from the end of uh, season two had come to mind. Um, since we haven't seen her since um, she introduced the Caster clones to us. Um, so um, the fact that we got to see um, Dr. Cody again um, as a prisoner in the, in the mental institution um, was a surprise. I kind of thought she died too, to be honest. Um, with how thing with how I remember um, things had ended with her, um, so there's that. Another shocking thing though was the fact that the the creature in the woods that attacked Sarah in the in the uh, premiere. Um, I was surprised to learn that he was a child with a unique genome that P.T. Westmoreland, Susan, and Virginia had experimented on. When I heard that, when it's a child with a unique genome, I immediately thought of Kira, and I began to be a little worried for her. But I'll get back to that in a moment, though. But moving on to top three favorite moments, I have to say my favorite has to be Sarah visiting Helena at the convent and just getting some words of wisdom from her and learning a bit about how Helena um, perceived the connection they had with Sarah and then trying to figure out how she should handle Kira and her wanting to know more about her own connection with the clones and then finding out um, a few little things as well. I, di I didn't occur to me until Helena said this, though, but Helena, um, as we remember in season one, she used to cut her back, and it would take the, sh uh, the form of these um, cut-out wings in her. And Helena actually mentioned that she stopped hurting herself when her sisters accepted her. That never occurred to me. I, it, it completely left my mind that Helena used to cut herself um, like she did in season one. It wasn't until Helena specifically pointed out that it actually occurred to me that, oh yeah, she hasn't done that in a very long time. Um, well, for us, for a very long time. For Helena, it's just almost a year for her. But that was surprising in itself, though, and it brought up a lot of things from season one, how the fact that they used to be enemies trying to kill each other, the fact that it was Helena who felt a connection with Sarah firsthand before they found out they were actually twins and not just clones. So it was just, it was really great to see Sarah going to Helena for some advice and just having that moment between them, um, especially since um, they haven't seen each other in some time, for them at least. So there's that. Another favorite moment of mine was actually um, seeing Sarah and Mrs. S working a con together. It was very interesting to see 
the, their dynamic when they're working a job and just see how they mix well together, how they're able to play off one another, how they're able to change into their role and that they're trying to play off and then the disguises they um, take. It just It's really easy to see where Sarah learned that from in Mrs. S. And it was just, it was really great to see them working like this together, even, um, to get the answers that they needed and just still staying, um, in character for the disguises that they were going for. And there's the timer. So I really enjoyed that. Another thing I liked, it's a small little thing. And it was, um, the moment where Felix was just drawing Kira. Um, it was great to have him take, um, inspiration from her in the little time that he got to spend with her. Also trying to use that time to get a calm Kira to kind of just let him know what's been happening with Rachel and stuff like that. And he got where, and he got somewhere um, with her, um, learning that she's trying to be protective of the clones, trying to get somewhere that her own mother is um, refusing to go um, to get answers. So it was very interesting to get a, uh, a feel of where Felix and Kira are right now. So there's that. Now, uh, let's move on to top three peeve moments. The only peeve I really had that I could think of was Kira's attitude, even towards Felix. And Felix pointed out that the fact that Kira reminded him a lot of Sarah with the whole stomping her foot and being very, um, having this very, I'm annoyed with everything type of attitude and just being very, um, very distant and very, um, closed off. Um, it's kind of bugging me still with Kira having that attitude. I can understand why she has it, but like at some point with the dire situations they're all in, you, it's kind of time for her to just cut it out and just like get with the program. But um, hopefully we'll get that next week. Um, um, and I'll mention why in a moment. But moving on to what moment will I remember most when I look back on this episode? I think for me, I'm going to remember not only the con that Mrs. S and Sarah were working on, but the fact that we got a little bit more uh, background history, history between Susan and P.T., uh, Westmoreland, uh, maybe a little more as to what led them astray, considering they both want the same thing in the end. It's just their ways of getting to it or what drew them apart. So there's that. Moving on, though, to random questions. I do have a lot of them, actually, um, now that I look at them. But the first one was, if Neolution plans to re recreate those experiments on Kira because she's unique, pretty much is that, are they going to be performing the experiments that they performed on that same child with the unique genome on Kira because of the fact that she's also considered unique. Um, I'm hoping not. I'm very worried if they do, um, especially um, with the the former child um, uh, test subject. Um, that was years ago when science wasn't um, as advanced as, is, as it is now. So I'm worried that now with its advancements, they might try again to see if the, the results change. Um, another question is how unique of how unique is the creature in the woods? Um, like how unique are we talking? Were they unique in regards to like Kendall Malone, where she had two sets of DNA, which is where um, Castor and Lita got their own DNA strands, or um, were they uh, unique like Kira, where she was a scientific miracle and a child of a clone, or had or a, a genetic anomaly that she wasn't supposed to exist and yet she does. How unique are we talking about this former uh, child test subject that turned a feral creature in the woods? So there's that. Uh, another question is that Helena was able to feel a connection between her and Sarah um, very on when, very early on when they first met. Uh, now my question is, was Sarah supposed to feel that type of connection too? Or did she just suppress it? Or did she just blow, um, blow it off as something that was being made up? And is it supposed to be similar to Kira's or is Kira's different because she feels um, the clones and not just one particular clone in general like Kalena does with Sarah. Um, so there's that question. Um, another question is when will Mrs. S mention Delphine's return or the fact that she could be her possible source in all this new Lucian detail? And my last question is that aside from the science what other history could there be between Susan Duncan and P.T. Westmoreland? At first I thought lovers, um, but then I weirdly had the idea that they could possibly be related to each other. I mean, P.T. Westmoreland is 170 years old, um, so is there any chance that they could be related like grandfather or granddaughter or father or daughter, putting extremely, or related in some way? Um, 
there has to be some way where I could see it. If they're not lovers, I could see if them actually being family. Because then, like, um, as growing up, he could have taught her his line of thinking with science. And then she grew up with the same um, desire to meet the same ends that he wants to. And then them kind of going off through after fighting over how to get to those ends. So I'm just, I, I truly believe that there's something more between Susan and P.T. And I'm just wondering what it is. Because as we know, Susan Duncan, the name Duncan comes from her husband, Ethan. So it's what is Susan's maiden name, as it were. So there's that. Moving on, though, to very prediction, to predictions very quickly. Sorry, based off the promo for 505, it showed that Cosima tries to find the creature in the woods. Um, it also shows her reuniting with Delphine very quickly. Um, it also shows Rachel going against her mother and showing who has authority over the situation. And it also looks like Sarah tries to get Kira to open up to her about feeling the connection with the clones as well as trading off what the family actually knows about Neolution and just trying to get some understanding between them um, from the looks of that. Um, but based off the synopsis for 505, it reads, which I got from my TV series app again, um, that while Sarah and Kira spend some well-needed bonding time at home, secrets are unlocked about Kira's special gifts that are surprisingly linked to the island's creature. Meanwhile, Cosima joins Delphine at the mansion for a twisted family dinner. Okay, so um, here are special gifts um, linking back to the island's creature. It has to definitely have to do with the unique genome that they had brought on in this episode. So hopefully we get more answers about that. Maybe Kira was told something that she doesn't know the significance to, but maybe um, Sarah and the others might. As regard, or in regards to the twisted family dinner that Cosima and Delphine join in on at the mansion. Um, either the twisted family part has to be between Susan and Rachel, or PT is really related to Susan, and that's where the whole twisted family thing goes into. Or maybe PT is also related in some way to Mud, the girl who um, has a soft spot for the, the island's creature. So there's that. But otherwise, I don't really know what else to pick up off of. But that's pretty much it, guys. What did you guys think of the episode? What did you guys like about it? What do you think is going to happen next? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and predictions about what you think is going to happen next. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I read blog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all the good stuff, all found in one place, so go check it out. Um, it's a work in progress. I have to catch up on it. Um, I'm doing fairly well so far, but... Um, it's still a work in progress, as well as my WordPress account, uh, which has the connecting link down below for Orphan Black. It's a work in progress there, um, but everything's organized and connected to that. It's just me um, updating things, which I just did um, today, actually. Um, so there's that. Follow me there if you like, or just at least check it out. Um, see what I focus on or what I've um, brought about and posted. So check that out. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. I will be coming back next week to hear about this able the next episode. Um, we're almost halfway through the final season, guys, if you can believe it. So that's pretty crazy. But until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you all a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.